cold stuff going on and you you don't know and you're just like you feel even worse and that's the sort of position that we need to put her in i reckon and this is just occurring to me that that's the way we approach it i say that there's no problem in the way i'm 50 now we don't talk about it enough my words are an individual journey it's a life stage We want you to join us on a journey <laughs> to hear the everyday story of women folk and to challenge the myths and the stigma surrounding the menopause. Yeah. And hopefully on that journey we'll find better ways to support women who are going through sorry about this. The change. Menopause is a hot topic. Mm -hmm. Celebrities like Davina McCall and influencers like Jenny Eclair are writing books, um, creating documentaries and um, content on the social media mm -hmm. which documents their experiences. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. There's even a menopause musical. Oh, oh really? really? I have no idea. idea. <laughs> menopause is all the rage. Yeah. So why then is it still such a taboo subject? We're going to examine that on this journey and we're going to look at women's experiences at home, at the doctor's surgery and in the workplace. I am fully aware that this government has recently rejected from its own Women's and Equalities Commission the suggestion that we should have menopause pilots across the country. Um, and why have they done that? Because they're worried that such, um, such pilots may actually Discriminate. Discriminate against who? Men! Men! Exactly. Oh, exactly. Oh, exactly. Oh, exactly. Oh, exactly. Oh, oh, anyway, oh, enough yeah. about this for now. Yeah. Enough about this for now. Let's get on with this journey. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Some of these tales are our own stories. With a bit of magic and imagination thrown in. A, a community, community cast! And me. <laughs> Over there at the end there? Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome everyone to our Menno Meetup. I'm Liv. I'm the facilitator for today. Uh, what we're going to be doing in this session is we're going to be thinking and talking about the menopause. Why it matters to us and why it should matter to everyone. So we're going to start with introductions as we always do and three words that you associate with menopause. So who, who'd like to go first? I will. Brilliant, thanks a lot. Hello, I'm Linda and I work for a firm of local solicitors. And I've sailed through the menopause in a way and I thought that might be a really interesting perspective. Um, my three words are change, age and woman. Brilliant, thanks very much. <coughs> Who'd like to go next? Uh, I will. Yeah, go on then. Thank you. Hello. I'm Rose. I work in sales. I went through a surgical menopause, age 45, 
when I had a hysterectomy and my ovaries removed. It hit me like a bag of hammers. I'm 50 now and I've spent five years battling with medical professionals and I've had counselling and all sorts. And my voice, you can probably tell, my voice is shaking. That's, that's just nerves. But the three words for me are devastating, life-changing. Thanks for sharing. Thank Who'd like to go next? I'll go. Hi. Hi, I'm Kari. I'm an artist. Um, we don't talk about it enough. I have a slightly different take on it. I rail against the way we're all conditioned to think. And, oh, my three words. Um, the curse lifts. Yay! Yay. Hello, I'm Alice, and I'm a vicar. <laughs> I want to share everyone how this affects all women from all backgrounds. My words are an individual journey. Yeah. Wow. Thanks, Alice. Who'd like to go next? Yeah, great. Thank you. Um, right, um, my name's Frida. Um, I've, I've, got, I've got teenage sons and daughters, a son and a daughter, I nearly forgot them. <laughs> Jack and Charlotte, and, and of course, my husband, Billy. Um, we live in Colour Court. I'm an office manager. I love a bit of country and western. <laughs> um, oh God, my head's all over the place. I can't even think of three words, never mind three words to do with the menopause. I don't know where to start. Well, why don't you start at the beginning? Just take it slow. Just come, to, just come and talk to us. Right, um. <sighs> right. OK. It started two years ago at 3 o'clock on the dot with an itch. It felt like something was crawling all over my body. And then it stopped down there. And it stayed. <gasps> God, how I scratched and I scratched. I didn't want to wake our Billy up, so I went downstairs, put a bit of music on, a bit of country and western. And I used all Jack's ear pods. And I just, I love it. I love a bit of Dolly. But not when you're scratching your doodah off to the, to the beat of nine to five. <laughs> anyway, I eventually I fell asleep because I was just exhausted. And the next morning, I googled it. <gasps> How you should have seen the things were up there for a niche. I mean, stay high at my age. Oh. I did think for a minute, though, Billy might have been, you know, having a bit of a play away. But, ugh, no. There was loads of stuff about mental health. And at one point, I even thought that I'd imagined it. And then I saw it. Night crawlers. Oh, yeah. Itchy skin can be one of the lesser known symptoms of the menopause. Mm -hmm. Well, that was it. Mm -hmm. Just endless weeks of appointments, of doctor's appointments, smear tests, and all sorts of appointments with other people, and nobody seeming like they were really listening or caring. We care. We're listening. What's going on? Oh, you're on a journey. <laughs> a what? This is the start of your groaning ceremony. Me what? It's a rite of passage for a woman going through the menopause. For a long time to be called a crone was an insult. It that I word implied a wrinkled, ugly old woman. And now, Jesus, I should have had that bloody Botox wall in. I was telling her the man. to embrace your crone. I'm not sure if I'm up for that. Many women who have achieved the title of crone Oh, hi. Come on down, have some champagne. Oh, but this is the start of your journey. There's no shame. Am I really going through the menopause? Well, do you strip off your cardi when everyone else is huddled around the radiator? Yeah. <laughs> do you have tampons gathering dust in your bathroom? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Do you have a meltdown in Asda because you can't figure out what's for tea? Every bloody week. <laughs> there you have it. Congratulations, Frida Cooper. Welcome, Welcome to the club!
And welcome to Beat the Menopause! The game show that talks about everything to do with the change. So, let's welcome to the stage our hostess with the mostess, Ms. Menopause herself, Robina McFall! Hello, everyone! I'm Robina McFall, and tonight I'm bringing you all the fun facts about menopause. Perry, post, and all that's in between. Oh, now, yeah. did you know? No, no what, Ravina? The menopause is a normal part of the life cycle where levels of the hormones estrogen and progesterone decline with age, making periods less frequent and eventually stopping altogether. Yeah. I know, imagine the freedom of no periods. That's something worth celebrating, right? Yay! Yeah. Now, did you know? No, no what, Ravina? Research shows that 10% of women leave their jobs because of their menopausal symptoms. I know, right? We need to start an uprising. Are you in? Yes! Good. So now let's... Beat the menopause! So without further ado, let's welcome our first couple to join the revolution all the way from Newcastle, married for almost 25 years, Frida and Billy Cooper! <laughs> What's going on? That's not my Billy. So welcome, folks. How are you both feeling? Oh, very confident, Rabina. <laughs> That's great, Billy. <laughs> right, OK. Well, uh, hands on buzzers, folks. Let's start with an easy one. What does HRT stand for? Rings. Hormone Replacement Therapy. Correct. Yay! Yay! HRT is said to relieve many of the symptoms of menopause, including hot flushes and night sweats, with many people benefiting really brilliantly from the treatment. But there can be negative side effects, including headaches, nausea, and weight gain. But it's all about choice, right, though, folks? Yes. Yes. So, OK, next question. An awareness of menopause can be traced all the way back to the ancient who? Me. Greeks. <laughs> Correct, Billy. <laughs> it's also been found in ancient Chinese medical writing, too. So this next question is for you, Frida. For me. What song did you recently forget the lyrics to due to your brain oh, fog? Oh, 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 this is oh, for real. Oh, and what do you think oh, you're laughing at? Oh, oh, oh. Clue. She was in the shower, folks. Oh. Am I hallucinating? I'm afraid that's the wrong answer. Over to you, Billy. Uh, would that be Stand By Your Man by Tammy Wynette? <laughs> Stand By Your Man. It's bloody hard to be a woman, I tell you. <laughs> it sure is, Frida, because after that round, Billy's in the lead. So let's hear what we're playing for today then, folks. Wait for it. It's the coveted prize of a freestanding chrome <laughs> high-velocity industrial cooling fan with three speeds oh, yeah. and airflow power controls. Stand by your fan rather than your man, then, eh? What are you doing here, Charlotte? Mum! Mum! Stand by your fan. Wake up, Mum! Oh. Mum, are you OK? Just a weird dream, pet. Oh. Glad oh. I woke you then. Oh. <clears throat> have you been out? Just down to the bull and book thing at the, at the Colour Coats Club. Uh, how come you're back so early? Nah. Tired, old, hormonal. What's new? Oh, what is opposed to young, tired and hormonal? I Where's Dad? I left him down at the club singing Coward of the County on the karaoke. Standard. I didn't suppose he's even realised I've left yet. He, I caught him googling the menopause the other day. Your dad does not deserve a prize just because he knows what HRT stands for. Dad can't even breathe without you snapping at him. Because he breathes too bloody loudly. <laughs> We're all walking on eggshells. Oh, I can't help it. Take the HRT, ma'am. Is that your advice, Dr Charlotte? <sighs> at least you don't get your periods anymore. 
more. Oh, very feminist of you there, Pet. Thanks a lot. Mum, I'm worried about you. What all are? It'll happen to you sometime. One day, you'll be out of the club, all glammed up, kicking your height, necking on with some Sam Fender wannabe. <laughs> and then suddenly, your head'll be all scrambled. And that's not to mention the night sweats, the insomnia, the loss of sex drive, the sore eyes, the burning mouth, the achy knees, the sore boobs, the bloody dizziness, and not to mention the total bloody fury. Yes! What? <laughs> and then you cannot even remember the words that stand by your man. <sighs> To be a woman, giving all your love to just one man. We can have good times and have bad times, doing things that you don't understand. <laughs> Rita Cooper to room three. Cooper. I still had the magazine. Oh. Mega forgetful these days. Right. Uh, this is Mary. Do you mind if she stays? No, no, of course. Thank you. Right. She's on placement. Um, let's see. How can we help you today? Well, you sent for me. Or at least I got a text from the surgery to say I had to come in for a smear test. Right. Well, Dr. Wright is very thorough. Oh, wait, that's a matter of opinion. I went to see him last week because of my hot flushes, and I said to him that I thought I was menopausal, but then he said that he didn't think I was because I was too young for it, but I don't think I am. Uh, mm, let's have a look, then. I, I can see you're 48. That does seem a little bit young. My mum went through the menopause in her mid-40s. Well, shall we have a little look-see, Brenda? Frida. Pardon? My name's Frida, not Brenda. Oh, all right, my mistake. That's all right, Malcolm. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I? Yes, please. Go behind the curtain and take off your lower garments. Ooh, my lower garments. I'll take my knickers off. <laughs> you get some women, Mary, who think they're in the menopause, but all that's happening is they're a bit depressed because they've found a few wrinkles. Seriously, I can't still hear you, no. <laughs> Are you ready for us? Yeah, ready, willing, and able. <laughs> Are you okay if Mary stays? <laughs> yes, of course. Why not? It's the most visit as my lady garden's had for ages. Right. Just relax your legs and you'll feel a cold sensation. <laughs> well, my sandwich is up there. I, I made some for me packed lunch and then I couldn't find them. I don't know whether I'm coming or going or baking a cake these days. Ouch, that hurt. Oh, apologies. You get some women whose skin down there gets dry, thin and much, much more sensitive. Thank God for super lube then, eh? <laughs> Woman's best friend. Who needs diamonds? Right then, you can get dressed. Right, your results will be back in uh, a, a couple of weeks, but it all looks all right down there. What about the hot flushes? Well, it's part of the menopause, if you are menopausal. So what you're saying, it's like hot and sweaty upstairs and like the Sahara Desert downstairs. <laughs> oh, it's all, uh, it's a woman's lot, I'm afraid. Alternatively, you could ask Dr. Wright to prescribe some antidepressants. But I'm not depressed. I'm not depressed. I'm shocked by your lack of empathy and compassion. Is it really a woman's lot just to be dismissed as some kind of whinger who has to get on with it? Every woman with ovaries will go through this at some point, and so will you! She didn't even tell us about the, the natural remedies that are out there that I could try. Or, I don't know, direct me to a website, give me something to read, some information of some sort. She didn't even tell us about the menopause clinic in the town. Oh, God. 
nowhere in here. Get me out of here, man. God, are they? Yes, please. Yes, yes. I've not got turned from now. Oh, I think there'll be some biscuits coming round. Be the biscuits they'll be the biscuits from last week and the week before, man. They'll probably stay. <laughs> Hey everyone, have you seen the state of Frida today? No, what's happened, Jim? Well, nothing happened as such, Dawn. Well, Apparently she's going through the change. What do you mean? It means she's gone through the menopause. But how do you know? Look at the state of her. Well, she looks all right to me. Well, she was chairing the planning meeting this morning, and all of a sudden she went completely blank. It was so embarrassing. Aye, for her? No, like, for everyone. No one knew what to say. And then she kind of snapped out of it, got up, walked over to the window, opened it, and stood there for a bit, apologised. Eventually, she managed to get herself back together, walked back to the table, and continued with her presentation. But they could see she had lost it. She totally had. She was red in the face. She was sweating. It was disgusting. Oh. It was a woman having a menopausal moment. We should be more sympathetic. Yeah, yeah, sure. I am sympathetic, Rach. I'm sure it'll happen to me one day. But, I mean, if she can't do her job, she should go on the sick or leave. I mean, she must be pushing 50 by now. <laughs> what? 50? <laughs> flipping women with a flipping hormones. Oh, actually, she has been a great manager, OK? She when head office were making those redundancies, she saved your job. In fact, she saved all our jobs. Yeah, 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 yeah. And when your dog died, Sheila, she gave you compassionate leave. Yeah. All I'm saying is if she can't do her job properly, then she needs to sort herself out. Yeah, we, we can't be expected to do a job for her. Hang on, hang on. Rachel's right. Frida's been great. She always sticks up for us. And when my mum was poorly, she was so kind. She even sent me flowers. Well, she's always been a stroppy woman. Oh, it's because she challenges you and you don't like it. <laughs> I thought you two were friends. Well, country and Western fans, maybe. Aye, oh, yeah. uh, they used to be pals until they both went for the same promotion and Frida got the job. That job should have been mine. Gordon practically promised me that job. It wasn't Gordon's final decision, was it? No, it's not like the good old days when mm. decisions were made in the gents, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> Jobs for the boys, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately for Jim, though, it was a proper interview really? panel. Yeah. And guess what? It turned out Frida had the right experience and attitude for the job. Yeah. I don't do well in interviews, me. <laughs> That's not the point. She's a great manager and we should be more sympathetic and less unkind. Oh, I'm off. I'll leave you girls to your gossiping. <laughs> Always yeah. been a sensitive soul, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Frida, Hi. you know what you were saying this morning? You know, in the presentation about the new recruits and the orientation yeah. activities? We were thinking we could get involved with that, maybe. Oh, thank yeah. That would be really good, because, like, to be fair, this morning, I don't really feel like I got my point across properly. Mm. I'm a bit all over the place at the moment. Mm. You and me both, Pet. Why don't you come over here and tell us about your plans again? All right, OK. Have I have a biscuit. Mm. So what I was thinking was... Mm -hmm. Poor Jimmy. Uh. <laughs> I bet he makes a complaint to the management when he finds yeah. out that the boat is a nice big fan to stand in front of when I'm having a hot flush oh, and I greatly yeah. finds out about the uniform change. <laughs> <laughs> so, you wanted to have a word with me, Katie? Uh, yeah. It's a bit embarrassing, really. It's, uh, it's about my uniform. Your uniform? Yeah. It's nylon, you see, John. Uh, uh, 
Your uniform's not nylon, it's polyester. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> whatever it is, it's very sweaty. No, your uniform's not sweaty, you're sweaty. <laughs> you're sweating now, look at you. You're all red. Are you unwell? I'm having a hot flush. So what? I'm going through the menopause. Could you please open a window? Menopause. No, I can't open the windows. They're locked and I've no idea where the key is. What I mean is, my hormones are all over the place. And that makes you sweaty? Yes, and wearing a nylon... I'm sorry, polyester uniform just makes it worse because the sweat just drips down my skin. It's horrible, uncomfortable. And you'd like me to do what exactly? Okay, well, I was hoping you could talk to the folks in purchasing, see if they can get some cotton shirts and trousers instead. So you want me to change this whole of the signature uniform so you'd be less sweaty? Well, no, not the whole of the uniform, just the stuff it's made from. I mean, um, well, actually, anyone that wears one of the company's uniforms. So they would benefit too, because <laughs> like, the men's overall, they're made out of um, night polyester as well, so they benefit too. Sorry, I'm not about to change the whole of the corporate signature uniform just so you can be more comfortable at work. Nobody else has complained, so I can't imagine it's a real problem, except for you, obviously. Is that the response of a line manager who gives a damn? No. Let's see how it could be done differently. John, you wanted to have a confidential chat with me? Yes about my uniform. Your uniform? Yes, it's nylon and it's sweaty, especially the shirt. Oh, that's not very nice. No, it's not, especially since I started having these hot flushes. It's horrible all the time. Do you want me to uh, open the window for you? Yes, please, that would be great. I'm not sure how it... I think I should be able to find the key. There. It's nice to get a bit of air in here, so... Uh, Thank you, that's much better. Thank so, you. So, uh, hot flushes, are you... Uh, are you going through the, uh, the menopause? <laughs> <laughs> I hate to admit it, it's really embarrassing, but God, here I go again. I understand. I mean, obviously, I don't know what it's like exactly, but I can, I can certainly sympathise. Mm -hmm. Look, the clothing contract's up for renewal in, I don't know, a couple of months, so I could see if our supplier does a cotton range. That would be absolutely brilliant, thank Leave you. Leave it with me. Actually, I was at an Enterprise Awards dinner the other week, and one of the local companies started to use recycled cotton in some of their products. That would be brilliant because it wouldn't just be you. Everyone would benefit and we would get some great PR out of it. We all win then. Amazing. See how it can be done right and with respect. We just have to care. Millions of, of working days are lost every year because of hostile work environments, which mean menopausal women have to take sick leave. Hundreds upon thousands of women leave the workforce every year for the same reason. Oh to be kind is also to be canny. Isn't that right, John? Okay. Mm. So, um, what do you fancy? Mm. Do you mind having a cup of tea or something? Yeah, yeah. 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 thank you. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. 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 Embody the menopause. Oh, we, spent, yeah. we spent a lot of time talking oh. about menopause and the experiences, both positive and negative. And now we're just going to display and emote the menopause. Mm -hmm. and so what's happening now then? We're going to start with <laughs> negative menopause symptoms. Are we ready? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Emotionally unstable. <laughs> Weight gain. <laughs> We've all been there. Hot flush. Loss of bladder control. Oh, God, yeah. Insomnia. <laughs> Grief and sadness. 
Knowledge comes from the womb, Frida. Oh, aye, right. Okay, and now we're going to do some positives about the menopause. That's positive. Oh, yeah. That's positive, yeah. Frida. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. More creative. Oh, I think I'll paint a picture. <laughs> Your period stop. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Increased libido. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> More assertive. E, I'm not doing that! <laughs> Happiness, joy and inner peace. <laughs> Increased energy. Working nine to five, what a way to make a living belly. Getting by, it's all taken and all given. They just Lose your mind and they never give you credit. It's, it's enough, enough to drive you crazy if you let it. <laughs> Rediscovering yourself. Hi, there I am. <laughs> Here I am. And me. And me. Anything else? Yeah. Frida. Say the yes, sweets. What? What? Well, when you're younger, you sort of hail through life and you don't appreciate what you've got. Mm. But as you get older and a little bit more wiser, things change. My mum used to say to me, stop wolfing down your sweet Frida pet. Now, I've stopped wolfing them down and I do appreciate because once you've been through life changes and made real change to your life, and well, then you just learn, don't you? You just learn to savour your sweets. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Do that. What a way to make a living better. Getting by, it's all taken and not given. Just lose your mind and they never give you credit. It's enough to drive you crazy. Treating the symptoms of your menopause? Manomax for, for 50 year old women who are going through the menopause. For women who have outlived their ovaries, try Milprin. <laughs> Concentrated estrogen that solves emotional distress. Lydia E. Pinkham's vegetable compound, women's tonic for feminine disorders. <laughs> Perfectly well, peach and cranberry flavoured nutritional supplement for before, during and after the menopause, packed with vitamin B6. Take, take, take the, the pause out, out of menopause. menopause! Enough! There's always somebody happy to take money off women who are suffering or in pain. Alternatively, you could go down to the boozer and have a cheeky little prosecco with your mates. And listen to some Johnny Cash on the jukebox. I came into a burning ring of fire. I went down, 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 and the flames went higher. I went down, down, burns the ring of fire, the ring of fire. Rubbish! How's yours? Absolutely just the same rubbish. Oh. Actually, have you tried the pebble magnet? The what? The pebble magnet? No, never heard of it. Well, one of the lasses at the, ma the last men all meet up, Maggie was telling us all about it. All right. Aye. Well, it comes in like two parts, you know. Um, so one bit goes down your pants, the magnet, and the pebble bit goes on top, so they're kind of attached to each other. Yeah, it'd be amazing if it works, but did it work? Well, uh, Maggie said that she would put it down her pants in the morning and she'd forget all about it. 
and then she'd go to the filing cabinet to get something <laughs> out of it. <laughs> and there'd be this almighty ka noise. <laughs> and she'd be stuck <laughs> for one of the drawers. <laughs> Her colleagues thought it was absolutely hilarious. I think it'd be bloody mortifying myself. <laughs> she couldn't go anywhere near the staplers. Oh, oh the staplers. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, horrendous. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, on the good side, I'm sleeping better since I got that ice pillow. Oh, that sounds interesting. Yeah, I was on the internet, as uh, you do, you know, checking, uh, having a look, see what helps with the night sweats. And I came across this ad for a ice yeah. pillow. You oh, put it in the fridge for a few minutes, and then when you lift it out, you put it inside your pillowcase. Ah. And off you go into bed. Oh, so, yeah. So, are you getting a good night's sleep? Nah, I didn't be daft. I've never had a good night's sleep since I got with that, Gary. <sighs> He snores like a it's walrus like a with a cold, I may add. It's like, oh, horrendous. But the sleeping is better. I'm miles better. I, I tend to get off to sleep now without all the thrashing and running around. And, uh, um, and I sleep for a few hours, wake up sweaty, you know, soaked right through. Trace downstairs, put the ice, ice pillow in and back up to bed. Spare room, mine, for a few hours, kid. Christ, uh, yeah. thought I was never going to get served there. Uh, hey, hey, Frida, how's this going, uh, Pets? Not great, lasses. Really? Oh. The M word? Great, yeah. so. Why? Well, it's got to get better, lasses. Oh. I hope so. No, my work is terrible at the moment. I mean, my manager is absolutely awful. Yeah. Horrible. Hey, I heard them talking about me sweating the other day. I've never been so embarrassed. That's just me. It is, it's embarrassing. Yeah. I don't even want to have sex anymore. Oh me, me and Katie were just row all the time. I know the feeling. The thought of Billy anywhere near me. <laughs> <laughs> but at least somebody cares. Oh, that's right. Mm. How is Gary these days? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we were just discussing and talking about things that help with the menopause. Oh, that's very positive. Mm -hmm. yeah. How are you finding those menno meetups? No, it's all right. It's just a bit like this, really, without the Prosecco. Well, you're lucky they let you go, though. Yes, right, but uh, I found something else that works a treat for me. Oh, oh, oh tell. do tell. Yeah. Oh, tell. So I get up at dawn mm -hmm. and I drive down to Cresswell Beach mm -hmm. and I scream me bloody head off! <laughs> Feels absolutely wonderful. Hey, don't people think you're bloody raving mad? I am raving mad. Stop, bloody raving mad. <laughs> hey, honestly, Frida. What do you do after it? What are you Oh, hey, it's terrible. I go to the cafe, have the bloody biggest fry up that they've got, put, get in the car, blast a bit of dolly, drive home, get in the shower get washed, get myself to work, just like any other day, really. But it does feel good getting those, you know, the primal screaming done, gets rid of the anger. It's cathartic, you know. Sounds fab, Frida. It is wow. fab. Well, yes, to whatever works. To whatever yes. works. Whatever yes. works. Soon, there'll be some celebrity trying to flog her menopause experience in a candle. <laughs> Can you imagine an angry vagina candle? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'd buy it. Oh, you would, wouldn't you? <laughs> 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 yeah, so fresh. Oh, mm. yeah. yeah. uh, yeah. yeah. ah. no, it's lovely weather. I bought the Prosecco, so we thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh! Yeah, it's yeah. 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 Okay, so we've been talking about, haven't we, about mind, body and heart. So who'd, who'd like to go next? Uh, I will. I will. Brilliant, um, thank you. Um, mind, body and heart. This is a happy heart for being here today. Aww. And they're connected, aren't they? The mind and the body to all the decisions that we make. And this is me reconnecting to my spiritual side. Aww. Oh, that's lovely. That was very eloquent, thank you. Who'd like to go next? I'll go. Um, so this is... Uh, Oh, mind, body, heart. Um, 
this represents what I kind of went through at 40, so even 11 years ago. Um, so one day I had a period, and then the next day I didn't. And then a, a couple of years of a little bit of a hot flush now and then, but that was really it. I mean, it was very liberating. Amazing. Thanks, Thanks for that. Thanks a lot. Who'd like to go next? Me? Yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Frida. Oh, it's a long way down that ground. Right. Uh, so this, this is the new me. Mind, body and heart. So I realised that it's like, it's a, it's a journey that we'll go on. It's a process. It's not, it's not the end of something. It's a new stage of something else. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway, it all came to a head a few weeks ago with, the family and the people at work. So I got them all together and I said, I am menopausal. And my mind, my body and heart are changing. And this is the new me. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Okay, yeah. And were they supportive? Yeah, they were, but I had to acknowledge it for my, myself first. Acceptance is key. Yeah, but the way Western society makes us feel about it is just awful. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, it's, so it's not surprising, is it, that we feel the way that we do about no. it? No, it's very true. Oh, my yeah. colleague Becky, when she did workshops in Uganda, she found that the experiences were really similar. Yeah. 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 And apparently matriarchal societies are more likely to cherish older women. Well, yeah. Because with age comes wisdom. Oh, I thought the same. Even if not everyone's old or wise. That's true. <laughs> That's true. And you know, in some societies, menopause is seen as empowering. Mm -hmm. That menopausal women are actually coming into power. Yeah. yeah. Why yeah. can't Absolutely. we do that? We can. Yeah. 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 Let's do it. Let's do it. Power yeah. to the women. Yeah. Woo. Can we do this? Women have evolved to outlive the life of their ovaries because menopause benefits society. Let's rebrand the menopause. Yes. yes! Let's get rid of um, sexist attitudes and revolutionise the way that women um, experience the menopause. Yes! yes. Let's do it. Woo. Let's do it. So, this is the new me. Yeah. And when I'm melting in the middle of a hot flush, you'll find me in front of my fan. So, stand by your fan. Stand by your fan. larger project and you've, you've complimented you clapped the the uh, cast here but I also just like to say thank you to Tracy Gilman who is our brilliant director wherever Tracy is at the back <laughs> Viv who is actually also part of the uh, cast but she was our producer so thanks Viv Jojo Kirtley, who together with me actually wrote the script. She's also the CEO and artistic director of Worky Ticket, of which is putting on this project. <laughs> and I'd also really like to thank Lynn, who is the only kind of professional actor. Well, possibly we're all professional actors now, but only, <laughs> only legitimate professional actor uh, of, the, of the cast and actually made our lives so much easier because she was able to you know, show us how to do it. Uh, for real. So thanks very much, Lynn. And thanks, thanks to everyone else. So we've got, we've got 10 minutes uh, for kind of questions. So happy to take any questions that, that you might have. Yeah, if anyone's got a question. Yes, person on the front here. Um, it's not so much a question. It's 
my experience of the menopause, I had my daughter, my fourth child, when I was 43. And three years later, I had a funny time when I went into town to Phoenix and I came back with all these goodies. <laughs> and, um, had a little bit of a hot flush, but I didn't really know what it was. So I said to the manager of the nursery, who I thought was about that age, and she said, oh, you're probably going through the menopause. <laughs> oh, thank you. Anyway, um, I then ended up in hospital with pneumonia. Oh. And when I came round, the nurse said, is there anything you'd like, Jan? I said, I'm doing my period. You've had it. I said, how long have I been here? Because normally I'd have eight days, five off, six more days. She said, oh, it was two days. That was the October. I had two days in the November. Hip, hip, hooray. I'd gone through the menopause. <laughs> hey. Thanks very much. We like to hear positive stories. Yep. Well, hopefully this is a positive story then. Uh, firstly, congratulations on doing a great play. Thank um, you. I've been um, working with our Gender Equality Network in my workplace um, and um, raising awareness and supporting women in the workplace has become a second job. Um, and it's so great to see that the menopause is being mentioned more these days. Um, and of, of course, when your celebrities get on board, the awareness is raised even sure. more. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so I've actually had to take a day's leave so that I can come to this play, but that's how important it is. Um, Brilliant. Uh, that's and, commitment. Yeah. Um, and when we started our menopause group, we're, we're a group of volunteers um, and we work across the country re remotely. So all of our work was done um, basically by the telephone, on, on webinars and things like that. Um, and really proud to say that we've won awards for the work that we've done. We oh, started. Well done. Brilliant. We came back to get, um, came together 2040. We all have our own unique menopause stories. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, for menopause, it was um, awful at the time for me because um, that was I'd, I'd had two miscarriages, um, right. and. Um, and so that was kind of like the final nail in the coffin of becoming a mum to my own flesh and blood. Sure. Um, so, so, yeah, mixed results. But I do think with, it, with age and the menopause, you do become wiser, and more confident. And I think it is vitally, vitally important to, to think about all the positives because there are so many. Yeah, and it was really great that you addressed that in, in the play. Brilliant. Thank Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, thank you. So this is a question. Um, how do you kind of reconcile that the, I think it was mentioned right at the beginning about how it's discriminatory towards men if women are given kind of special leeway or conditions. Is, uh, how do you address the argument, and I'm not saying this is my argument, um, that it's kind of set women back and make them more unequal in the workplace because, you know, already we've, we're dealing with, oh, well, if she's just going to go and have babies, you know, are we going to get the same thing with, oh, well, if she's going to expect special treatment because of the menopause? What, what's a good way of addressing that, um, dealing with the kind of men that you played so brilliantly with your little Thank tash? you, with my tash, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if I could actually just uh, prevail upon one of my colleagues here, uh, Paul Britton, who is the uh, kind of EDI, one of our EDI leads in wellbeing, because I think that, that's a really useful question for us to answer as a 
as an employer through Newcastle University. So, Paul, could you just say, just respond to that question? Yeah, I, I want to comment on government decisions around what was mentioned on the stage, but for us... Yeah, it is a really, it's, it's a brilliant question. I think for us, it's this type of thing, it's awareness raising. It's, we, we here at the university, we're trying to work to put menopause champions in place. We're doing training through our wellbeing teams with managers and, and people on the ground to just, as you've done today brilliantly, by the way, everyone absolutely fantastic, um, is to raise awareness of it throughout the organisation, but just make sure people have got the right support in place as well. Thank you. I think we've just got to be really careful that we're not going to be tokenistic about it. And I think that's what worries me, that we're not going to just be ticky boxes, because I don't want that to ever happen to, you know, to people who are experiencing the menopause. That isn't going to wash with, with me. And I mean, you know, I'm on worky ticket and I wouldn't ticky box anybody because we all deserve a lot better. So I think that's, that's from a point of view that isn't from the university. I just think in general, we've just got to be careful that that's not what you know, if we put a menopause policy in place in an actual workplace, we're not just doing it because it ticks the government's boxes, you know. Um, but I think the ag agreeing with the raising awareness and, you know, maybe having some kind of, like, menopause workshops or that everybody in the company understands and knows and raises awareness in that kind of way. So that would be my answer to that anyway. My Thank personal answer to it. Thanks, Jojo. Yep, got a question over here. Hi, I just wanted to ask, um, kind of what next, I suppose. So what's, what, what happens from here? Karen, I know this is part of a wider project for you, so just wondering where it all goes. And also, question two, um, just why theatre? Why did you personally choose theatre as a, a way to um, talk about this issue? OK, let me... Well, just if I can answer it in reverse. I mean, why theatre? I mean, I think that for... You know, for me, as someone who works at university who's an academic, I really, you know, I'm very used to doing some research and writing up as a paper or a book. You know, three people read it, it goes on a shelf, it doesn't do anything. Whereas theatre, or anything actual visual, visual or creative, you actually can get a message across in a, in a really... I mean, today, I mean, hopefully, yeah, we had lots of laughs. I mean, we, we wrote it as a, a way of actually trying to talk about menopause in a humorous way. But I think having a play... And as you, as you know, that this is being filmed, the film will then become a, a kind of training resource so that it is actually about raising awareness. So we're really keen, I'm really keen, we're all really keen that we do try and raise awareness about how, how women experience menopause. Because you, you can have a list of symptoms, but actually getting inside our heads in terms of what it feels like, you know, what it, what it looks like, what it sounds like, I think, is really important. So using drama or film or animation, because the earlier part of the project, uh, we produced an 18-minute uh, animation, which actually was produced by my colleague here, Cheryl Jenkins, um, just a really fantastic animation, which really talks in a really gorgeous way about some of these issues that we have actually described um, to today in, in the play. So I think theatre and anything kind of creative, film, animation, is really powerful of getting those messages across in a way which isn't, you know, lecturing and doesn't require you to read, you know, an 80,000 word book. So I think, so that's why I think theatre. And obviously I kind of knew the work that Jojo was doing at, at Worky Ticket and she was, she was the, the most obvious um, collaborator. And we actually worked really well together in terms of scripting it. Although obviously I don't speak Geordie, so we had a, we had we tried to make it feel like a kind of unified narrative was a bit of a task, but hopefully we, we managed to pull it off. Um, and I think that so so really that's that's why I think um, what what we're doing is about raising awareness. So in terms of what next, this is being filmed. It's actually going out on a live Zoom, so hopefully people will you know obviously be looking at it, um, in, in, including the kind of Q and A. And again, it's about raising awareness. You know, we can do so much with, you know, using things like Zoom, you know, using kind of Instagram, although I'm not really that, that person, but some people are. You know, so we'll probably be doing something kind of small, some snippets we can put on Instagram, just to try and raise awareness about some of those issues. So I think, you know, for, for me, this is great. It's great that you're here because... 
as you probably you know know, we kind of sign up for free things every every five minutes, and then you know the sun comes out and no one turns up, and here you all are. So it's just brilliant that you are here, and we're really grateful for you having an audience because it just makes it makes it all kind of worthwhile. All these weeks and weeks of stress and and fun, um, culminating in this brilliant performance um, today. But Jojo, do you want to say just something very briefly about theatre as someone who's you know who who runs a theatre company? I just believe that anybody can act, right? Apart from me, I, I don't want to get up on stage and act, right? But um, I, it's, it's, it's something that I've always believed in, even since I was at school. I went along Benton High School. I didn't really think that I was very good at anything. Um, and I, I fell into drama, and I just think it's... It, you know, you can, you can do it, it doesn't matter what background you've got or where you're from... And that's why I love working in the community with people and encouraging anybody to act. Um, and when, obviously, Karen approached me and said, oh, you know, do you want to um, write a script um, and get a load of menopausal women in the room and um, work with them? I was like, how will they remember their lines? That was a total joke. I'm only joking. Um, <laughs> I know I've got it all to come. Um, but, yeah, so for me, theatre, and it's always this idea that it's for social change. You know, um, and that's what Work Your Ticket do. We try and use it as a tool for social change. You know, we do a lot of stuff around uh, violence against women and girls, um, domestic abuse, and that's our next project. And I just think, for me, using theatre as that tool to engage people that don't usually engage, because we try to make it really accessible, um, and we use different venues. I mean, this is a brand new venue to us. I wouldn't even have thought about putting a play on here. You know, we use community centres. We don't just always go to Northern Stage or Live Theatre. In fact, we try to avoid them because, you know, if the ticket prices are high. We try and make it really accessible in terms of making it as cheap as possible. It was free to come today, you know. And I think that's what's really important on the other side of things, you know. Um, and to, again, going back to what Karen was saying, raising that awareness in a different way making it accessible for people who don't usually, you know, come to the theatre, raises it to a different crowd of people as well. And we're all obsessed with TV and film and all those kind of things, but it costs a lot of money. I mean, so does theatre. But I think this is a, a free, amazing way to really share different experiences. And obviously before this, we did performance workshops. Um, it was already workshopped before that. So using all those tools and getting everybody together and giving everybody an opportunity to have their say through theatre and creating that platform is exactly what Work Your Ticket's about. And I hope that came across as well within that actual play too. So, Thank yeah. You. Thanks, Jojo. We've got uh, time for... Yep. Yeah. Thank you. It's five past. We've got... If, if anyone's got a couple... Of, yeah, qu question at the back there. Oh, in the middle, really. Uh, my, my, um, it's a bit of a call to action, really. Um, I'm 44, and I'm only now learning about my own body when it comes to the, the menopause. So this is about how we educate the young women and girls. Um, I've been working for over 20 years professionally with um, young people, particularly with girls and young women. And um, we've made projects and films about periods and all the other things that happen to teenage girls and their relationships, but... <laughs> It just struck me when I arrived at this point in my own life that no one ever told me about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. And unless you've got a good, positive, open relationship with older female members yeah. of your own family, um, you might not know. And then the most ironic thing is for a lot of women who get to perimenopause, if they have children, their children are going through puberty. And yeah. my goodness, there's a raging hormonal house there. <laughs> So it's about educating young boys as well as young women. Um, and that's really a question as to how we take the, the, you know, the personal stories and the issues that are raised and actually make it more of a wider discussion. So it's not just educating kind of adults and workplaces. It's about our young people to know what is ahead of them um, and do that in a way that's creative, like you say. You know, there's ways to do that. Um, so it's a bit of a, a call to action as to how we can think 
about that for our young people. But I think, I mean, just to answer that question, it's why, you know, things like, you know, when, this, when the film is kind of edited from this performance, you're using things like the animation film. You know, these are all resources which will be available to everyone, free to download, because I think they are actually really useful ways to work with, well, with everyone, but particularly with young people who are much more, you know, visually engaged. So I think that the more that we can do these kind of activities, you know, this one, you know, there'll be other, you know, there's other, you know, it's, it, you know there's a menopause... Um, performance, a menopause musical. I mean, I just can't imagine anything worse than a <laughs> menopause. I hate musicals anyway, but, you know, so there are these kind of these activities which are out there. But, you know, for us, I think it's about trying to get people to know about them. You know, so the more that we can actually cascade these kind of activities, you know, through our network, say, oh, my God, I saw this great performance, and here's the link, you know, here's the Zoom link to see it again or whatever it is. So I think it's just, you know, if, if we just do that little bit of homework to try and find, find out about these resources. I think that that would be a really good step. Sorry, can I just add another thing? Just yep, hurry up. In terms of educating young people, I completely agree. And actually, I don't know if you all know, I, I don't know how many of you have got kids or have contact with schools, but relation, relationships education and relationships and sex education is now compulsory in all schools, including faith schools across the country, which is brilliant and it's been fought for for many years for those of us working in sexual health. And menopause, um, is, menopause education is part of that. It's actually in the curriculum. It's actually meant to be talked about. So, but there's, unless kind of Ofsted do an inspection and check, they're not going to make sure. So if you have contact with schools, if you've got kids at school, contact your school, ask what their relationship and sex education policy covers, encourage them to talk about period education for everybody, not just for people that menstruate, but for everyone that, that gets periods or might get periods and, and everyone else that doesn't, and what then happens through perimenopause and menopause. Because you're right, you know, we might have vaguely heard about hot flushes, but until I started experiencing all the perimenopausal symptoms, I, I thought I was losing my mind. I, yeah. even, even though I work in that field, I yeah. still didn't yeah. know what it was. Yeah. I mean, I've like, passed like flowers and years, and I've learned so much just from this, that, you know, the workshops that we've done mm. together. I was yeah. like, oh, God, that was me. Mm. And I, you know, basically thought I was just going a bit cracker, but it was, you know, it was yeah. actually symptoms. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to just say... Thank you again. Uh, there's loads of kind of snacks and uh, drinks outside. So cake. Okay. So there's lots of cake. I mean, the, obviously the the cast and the crew are going to be at the at the ahead of the queue because we've just been <laughs> stuffing <laughs> ourselves because most people haven't been have been a bit too nervous to kind of eat or drink anything. Uh, but thanks again for coming. You know, I'm glad that you enjoyed it. We really enjoyed, you know, the rehearsals and the performance, even, you know, even through the, the anxiety and adrenaline. And <laughs> again, I just want to thank Tracy for keeping us motivated. <laughs>